Right. Ah, recording. Just said hello to the alipacas. Not on video. Alipacas! I shout like that to them. And they always look up to greet me. Always. And when I first did it, they would come really nearly the whole way over to the fence to see me. Uh, but they, they do know it's me, because they always look up in the beginning and then they say, that's only Sheila. She's no worry, we mustn't worry about her. Look at these lovely old walls. Look. Yeah, I've done another big hill a minute ago. The early packers are through there. They're still listening to me. A couple of them are still on alert. Up ahead is the black rock wood, part of which I call the Hobbit wood. That's my, what I call it. A little bit of a breeze now. Come on, I'm glad I lost that bloke. Well, hopefully I have. It's like this, I didn't want him to interfere with my walk today. Because I mean, I must have must have put 20 minutes on my walk. Me having to zigzag and backtrack. I think when I was in the army cadets, they taught me quite a few useful skills actually. Especially about camouflage, concealment, how to avoid an ambush. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff like that. And uh, fortunately I have, though I have to wear glasses for reading, I have actually got very good long sight. There's the alipacas, look. Right out in the field today. One lying down having a rest. They're still looking over. They know I'm here. Yeah, they know I'm here. They um, tried to rescue some sheep once when I was up here. I think they were in... If it wasn't this field, it was the next one. And the sheep was close by. And there was a bloke with a couple of dogs. Rot not rot fires, staffies. And he was letting them chase the sheep. Well, all the other packers ran over and started making this horrendous noise at, at the man and the dogs. I phoned the police and told them what was happening because it, uh, so it, it was pregnant sheep and they got onto the farmer there and he came out on his quad and for ages the bloke was still chasing the sheep with his letting his dogs chase the sheep. Yeah. They said they've got good guards, alipacas. You always get the odd mushroom out, don't you? Quite a few here. If I see that bloke, it's only because he would have spotted me with his binoculars coming up this way. So, I won't be totally shocked <coughs> if I saw him. But he might, it's probably totally innocent, you know what I mean? He's probably bird watching. It's the way he leapt over that gate. And he seemed to be heading for me, and I thought, well, I don't really, really want to walk with anyone. So, I, first of all, I thought, I'll just change direction for a minute. Then he was standing still with his binoculars scanning. Like he was looking either for a bird or something. And then I, so I changed direction. Every time we changed direction, so did he with his binoculars all the time. In the end, I sort of lost him because I went up the ridge and down the other side. <coughs> Put 20 minutes on me walk. I managed to see him and I know he'd, uh, he wasn't aware of where I was. And so, what happened was I um, rejoined the walk I wanted to do. And I was relieved when I saw a woman with a dog. I like to say, you don't know. 
if there is something dodgy, could be a man and a woman together in, in it. I always am alert when I'm out. I am alert. I keep guard. It's just the clothes he was wearing. Obviously, he got good outdoor clothing. Um, what the sort of outfits that Bear Grylls wears, he had on. And um, he reminded me of him. And I thought, God, if I'd had my camera working properly, I could have got some really good up close shots of him. Right up to his face. Because <laughs> this is a good camera, really. But it's having lots of problems with the viewfinder. Anyway. Those of you who follow me will be recognise this route. And you'll say, in the last three months, Sheila, two months even, you've walked this route three times. Well, basically, I walked it twice this way and once back that way. The Alapakas are big guys. They're still looking at me over it. Alapakas! See? Alapakas! I'm, very, I'm still very wheezy, but I've just gone up another hill. If you imagine, I come, the gorge is just down there. I've had to climb up this side. The only hill now will be Crooked Track or Lane up near Longwood. And then I want to try and go across these fields, hoping the big herd of cows is not in there. I haven't done it for a good year, that walk. I only really do it when the cows are out. And I like to be able to do it in both directions. So today, I'm doing it from east to west, near Piney, Piney Slides. Well, it is Piney Slides fields. And then if the cows aren't there, I know they won't be there for a couple of months. So another one of my walks will be to come in the opposite direction. I take loads of pictures of that tree, by the way. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I love this field, you know. There's something magical about this place. Just here. There's something magical about these trees. And this scenery, I just love it. Oh, I really love it, you know. I really, really love it. Really love it, I do. Because that's Longwood down there, look. See? I'll be right walking in those fields a bit later on. Over there. I can't quite see if there's any cows. I might be able to see when we, we, I get it past those trees in a minute. But that's Longwood, that big furry bit. There's the Mendip Hills up there. It's Longwood because it's long. I don't know if there's people working in there. It's supposed to be closed all winter. I didn't see a sign last time I came past it. Right, over and out, I've got to take a picture of this tree. Over and out.